All right, guys, welcome back to the shack. Today, I've got a little special video that I want to do on my latest addition to my capabilities here at the shack. Now, for the past couple of years, a lot of you guys know that I'm into laser engraving. I, you know, I've gotten into CNC's. I love automated creation, so to speak. That's what I'm calling it. You know, there's several terms, but I love to be able to put machines to work making things. Uh, it's a force multiplier for, my, for me. And you know that a big emphasis on tweaking machines, tweaking things, making tools, making things that make my life easier here in the shop. And guys, I should have listened to you earlier. 3D printing is the bomb, okay? I had to do a little homework to try to make sure I found an affordable machine that wasn't too big of an investment for me to make until I decided if it was something that I really wanted. Uh, so I've done, done a lot of homework research listened to a few of you guys' recommendations and i finally pulled the trigger and i've had it for a week or two now and and guys this thing's awesome so if you want to see some of the pitfalls and the benefits to having a 3d printer accessible to your shop stick around and we're going to kind of go over that First of all, everybody's rite of passage, I did a bunny, okay? That seems to be, that and the benchy seems to be the two things that everybody has to do when you get a 3D printer. Because guys, trust me, after getting it out of the box, putting it together, adjusting everything, all I wanted to do was see that it worked. And uh, 3D printing, you guys told me, it, it's definitely not fast uh, compared to lasers and CNC's, even, even CNC's. 3D printing is slow, but man, it is awesome what you can do with it. So before I get too much into what I've done with the machine, guys, uh, I want to throw this out there. You will, in order to do some of the stuff that I do, you will have to have the ability to design in some type of CAD software, 3D rendering, or whatever. I use Fusion 360 because I have it, I purchased it a while back for other things to do mock-ups and you know illustrations and stuff with. And so I've been using Fusion 360 to do my designs and then I export it over to, to the slicer and send it to the machine. But that's something you need to know up front, guys. Unless you're planning on only printing downloadable files from other people, make sure you're willing to bite off into 3D design. You're gonna need a computer that's capable of doing it and a lot of patience. It's a big learning curve but it is well worth it at the end. So, many of you may be wondering, the ones of you that don't already know, which machine did I decide to go with? Because guys, it's, it's just like the laser world. There's tons to pick from, okay? Well, there's this little known company called Creality, and yes, guys, they're, little, they're not very big on the laser world, but in 3D printing, Creality is, is, is very popular as far as budget, you know, starter 3D printers. Uh, more particularly, they're, from what my research indicates, is the Ender 3 is one of the most popular uh, you know, hobbyist 3D printers that you can get. So I did my homework and decided to go with the Creality Ender 3 version 2 Neo. So Ender 3 version 2 Neo. And basically, guys, it, they took the Ender frame, the Ender 3 frame that they originally started out with, made some improvements, changed out some of the extruders and the way that it works, added auto bed leveling and some other cool features, which are nice, and came out with this machine. Now, I will tell you, it's a little more expensive than the Ender 3s, the plain Ender 3s. But guys, I was scared to death that I was going to get into this and it was going to frustrate me to the point to where I didn't want to do it anymore. Uh, so I listened to a, a several, I watched you, several YouTube videos, several YouTube channels that, that do 3D printing. Like, they do it a lot. And, you know, emphasis was get the 3D, get the, the Ender 3 version 2 Neo, and before you do anything, tune everything. Adjust the concentric wheels, adjust everything, make sure everything's square, you know, take time and level the bed, level the bed, level the bed, level the bed some more. Even though it does have auto bed leveling, you don't want the machine to try to compensate for too much. So you want to get that as close as you can by yourself manually using the little adjusters. Well, I spent probably an hour doing all of that. And guys, this was my first print. I mean, awesome, awesome little bunny. I mean, <laughs> I was shocked. 
okay? Since then, I have gotten a little more creative. And many of you may know that, and I'll turn the machine, turn the, the, the camera over here for a minute where you can see it. I do a lot with lasers. And sometimes these machines lack a few things that they need, such as these little clips right there, which is basically this guy here. Uh, I designed this to hook into the extrusions and hold the cabling. And like on this Sculpt Fun machine, the limit switches had no covers, and I was afraid they were gonna get damaged because that machine is one that stays on the wall. I get it down when I need to use it and put it back. So I wanted some little guards to go on the limit switches. And as you can see, I prototyped those and made me some limit switch covers. So that was the basic reason that I wanted a 3D printer was to make little covers like this. This is a, this is a limit switch cover that I made for this machine. Uh, this was version one and guys, you'll learn version one randomly works. Okay. I'm, I'm still learning. Uh, version one worked, but it didn't offer quite the coverage that I wanted on this end. So I went back into the file, extended this little section here you know, added a few little faces to it and reprinted it with my logo on it. And that's what's on there now. But this one works just not as well as version two. So got to play it around some more. I've got friends that do a lot of clay uh, earrings and stuff like that. And they wanted the logos of some of the local high schools. Well, guys, I made this little thing, which is kind of oddly shaped. It kind of looks like one of those uh, little nasal things, but it's, it, it's a stamp for clay and it has the high school logo on the bottom of it uh, so that when she makes her earrings, now she can you know, stamp the school logo on whatever clay object it is that she's making. And I'm gonna do a set of these that's gonna contain basically every school in our area. And I'm gonna make this cool little uh, laser cut holder to put them all in. It's, it's, gonna be, it's gonna be sharp when I get through with it. So my latest problem that I had was I needed a adapter to go on the end of my shop vac so that I can clean up after the CNC because there's this crack about that wide on the 4040 that nothing will fit down in there. So last night I drew this up in Fusion and made myself a little adapter. And it is just long enough, guys, to go beside the, between the spoil board and the frame of the machine. And it attaches to my little cleanup vac. This is a... Uh, this is my little cleanup vac. I use this in my enclosures. I use this for the CNC. And so now I have this thinner extension that can reach down in those cracks. And I didn't have to order it. I didn't have to you know, hunt for it. I didn't have to guess at the measurements. I literally took, measured the outer diameter of this and made my little design to where it slides right on there. And it works great. I've used it to clean up the sawdust around the uh, CNC today. So it, it works great. But, that is the reasons that I got into 3D printing, guys. And I, the, the 3D printer does stay in the house because it's very dusty out here and I'm out of room. Uh, and it's easier when I'm doing overnight designs and stuff like that. It's a little more secure in there than it is out here with a couple of curious cats flying around everywhere. And, and, I, and I love the fact that I can make my own parts, upgrade my own machines. I mean, I've got all these ideas of things that I wanna make, uh, adjustments, tweaks, and stuff like that. Now, you are limited to the material that you can use. My machine's only rated to go up to ABS, I believe, without some major upgrades. Uh, but who's to say next week I won't decide I want a better one. So I just wanted to bring you guys along and just kind of give you an idea of what you can do with a 3D printer. Like I said, but you're going to either need to be able to design in some type of CAD software. And there's some, you know, uh, free sourced CADs out there that you could possibly use. There's some cheaper alternatives to Fusion 360, but I started out using Fusion 360 and I still haven't got everything figured out for all of the different machines, but I can use it to design stuff for lasers, for CNC's, for 3D printers. It's just a very versatile software. And so that's what I've been running with the 3D printer. But all right guys, so here is the software that I'm using. This is a uh, Fusion 360 and you can see I've got a lot of my little projects in here. Uh, it's, it's pretty neat because you can actually preview 
the items. You can go in here, see what they look like, and you can you can do a lot with the software. But we won't get into all of the things that I have made. This is the shop vac mo mo nozzle that I just showed you. Uh, these are my little twist cable holders. These are these are items that I've created. But I'm just going to give you just like a quick peek at what goes into designing uh, a file. So what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to start a new file. And I am a total noob at this, guys. I've started cramming, trying to learn how to create basic things. And as time goes along, I'm hoping to get a little bit better at it. Uh, but basically, you start out with a workspace like this. Uh, you can rotate the workspace. You've got a little home view, which is kind of like over the left shoulder, I guess you could say, view. But the very first part that you've got to do is kind of like using Lightburn or any of the other softwares is you've got to create a drawing. And to create this drawing, you have to select a plane. And of course you have X, Y, and Z. Uh, most of the time I start out with the, you know, the bottom. You, you want it on the bottom because you're gonna be coming upward with the design. So we'll just do a quick little shape here. I'll just, uh, let me see, what can I do? All right, we'll just basically like, let's say the hose adapter that I made. Let's say that we're adapting a hose that's 25 millimeters. So I'll go over here using this tool and it makes a circle for you. And this is pretty awesome, guys. This is like borderline magic, the way that 3D printing works. And then if I want it, uh, say I want it three millimeters thick, then I will be adding six millimeters to that 25, which would make it 31. And I know math's not my strong suit, guys, but I can do the basic stuff. So once you get that design, you just finish. I mean, that looks a lot like Lightburn, but you've got these 3D, you know, things that you can do now where you can take and extrude this little, well, there we go. You've got to be, I have learned that you've got to be at a certain zoom before to let you select these planes and it takes a minute. But you just go in here and you can tell it, okay, if I want this thing to be 30 millimeters high, I'm just going to extrude it 30 millimeters. I'm going to make it a new body because there's nothing else here. And then voila, now I've got like this little cylindrical 30 millimeter tube. And so you can go and you can modify again, let's say like for the one I built, basically I'm gonna go up here, I'm gonna select this plane now because I'm gonna actually add to this piece. All right, so I'd go and add to this piece, create myself another little circle and I'm gonna drag it out and it needs to be 31. So it's the same as the outer diameter of the object. I'm gonna hit enter. All right, finish that little sketch. And I'm just going to box this thing in completely because once you select these and extrude here, I'm going to go up three millimeters, keep it three millimeters thick, and I'm going to make sure it joins it. And so that's going to like put it together for me. So now you have basically a cup. But you, it's, it's neat the way that it works. Once you get whatever it is that you're wanting to design, uh, if I wanted this to be hollow in the center, of course, I could probably edit the one that I just created, but I can go in here and create another uh, another sketch, and I can put a hole. If I wanted it to be a 10 millimeter hole in here, uh, just hit enter. And now I can, uh, once I finish this sketch, I can select that and do extrude on it. But instead of a positive number, I can give it a minus three, and it'll make a hole. So it's... <sighs> There's, there's a learning curve, but if I wanted to make, like I said, if I, if I wanted this for, you know, whatever reason, well, I could make it this way. And you can do all kinds of cool things. Uh, you can go around the edges here and kind of add a little taper to it to make it more refined. Uh, that's something I've been playing with. And depending on the thickness of the material, of course, the more you go, it's going to make it rounder. Uh, you know, usually like a 0.5 just kind of rounds the edges if you don't want it sharp on the edges. Uh, but you can you can really get crazy and get carried away with this uh, and <laughs> make yourself like a little beer keg. But it's it's very interesting. I'm still learning a lot of the, the dynamics of it. Uh, but once you get it to this part, guys, it's, 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 it's pretty awesome. You can come in here. I can create a mesh for this, uh, for this object. And once I do that, I can... I, you may not actually have to do the mesh. I like to do the mesh because it seems to clean up some of the corners. But once I do this, you're more or less at the point to where all i got to do now is go over and export this. And the file type that I use is the 3MFs. Uh, I'll export that. Uh, it's going to show it in my Explorer. I don't even know where I put it. Okay, I put it back in my folder. 
So then once you get your design built, because this is a Creality machine, I used a slicer that was made for the machine. Uh, there are other slicers out there. Some folks argue that they're better, but I'm using a Creality printer. The profile for my printer was already in their slicer, and so that's what I went with, and I've had good luck with it so far. Uh, if, you know, if I start tweaking anything with my machine, I may have to go to Cura or something like that. But so far, this thing's been doing a really good job for what I, do, for what I use it for. So the name of this one is Untitled because we didn't name it. So it'll bring it into the uh, slicer. And because of when I designed in Fusion 360, I don't always, you know, I don't put the origin out here. You just got to come in here and move this thing. I usually like to do zero and like 30 or so because I don't really want it in the middle of the work area. I try to move them around so as uh, not to wear out my little uh, base or pad or whatever you want to call it. And then you hit the slice button. And when you hit the slice button, it tells you how long it would take. Uh, you can also go in here and preview it. And this will actually show you how it's going to build it out, everything it's going to do. Of course, there's some things it's going to have, such as supports. And, you know, you've got adhesion, which I have found. Do not use that with this machine because it makes it hard to get off. Uh, it doesn't need it. It sticks really well to the little magnetic pad that I have. So, you know, it's pretty basic, pretty simple. And then all I do say, this is a Creality format. Save it on the SD card for the machine, and I can run it with the offline controller. And I've had really, really good luck. You can see some of my some of my designs and stuff that I've come up with. Uh, currently, I have the machine making a skeleton for my daughter for Halloween decorations. So that's one reason why we haven't got the machine here. So, but guys, that's a like high flyover for the software, and I just saved that. <laughs> Let me delete that. I'll be printed it accidentally. Uh, but that's a high flyover for the software. It's it it's not terribly complicated, but just know that when you go to get into this, and you're gonna have to learn new software. But but guys, to be able to come up with something from an idea and make it actually happen uh, is one of those things that I, I really really like. So back to the video, and we'll go over some stuff. But guys, I'm loving it. I can make tools. I can make pretty much anything I want. Uh, as far as plastic items, that's the limit, but hey, it's cool what you can do with plastic. This stuff, this is PLA. This is probably the, the weakest plastic that I have in there. I have PLA, I have ABS, and I have PETG, I believe. Don't crucify me if I got that wrong, guys. But, you know, I'm using PLA right now because it's just, it just seems to be a little more forgiving. Uh, and so far, so good. I'm getting good results. These parts, for what I'm using them for, are adequate even with the three millimeter thickness of this it's it's very it's very sturdy so if you've been kind of on the fence thinking about getting one uh there's thousands of files out there on like thingiverse and some of these other places and people a lot of times will share stls with you uh me personally i like to build the files because to me guys that's half the fun is being able to go from concepted idea to finished product and i, I love it so I'll put a link down below for the printer that I have and the uh, supplies. Yeah. Maybe maybe one day we can do a video inside the house and uh, kind of show you how it works. Uh, might even, as I learn more, you know, we may be, you know, 3D printing may be actually something that comes into the channel. But I know a lot of you guys were asking me about it. A lot of you other guys who do CNC work or do laser work have kind of been like myself and kind of been on the fence. Is it something you want to get into or not? But as long as you take time setting the machine up in the beginning, it seems to be fairly easy to maintain consistency so far for two weeks on the Creality. So, knock on wood, I haven't had any major problems with the machine. So, until next time, guys, uh, keep, keep making things. Keep, uh, keep being creative and be safe. Have a good night.